Hey, everybody. It's good to be back. Um, so here we are. We're looking at, thanks. We're looking at um, our Moodle. This is our 140A Moodle. So this is where all the labs are posted. I'm not 100% sure why they decided to break up the Moodle into two different pieces, but they did. And so all of our um, labs are here in 140A. All of our classwork test quizzes are in 140. So we're looking today at this cemetery lab. And this can be a really fun lab. I really, um, I know that we have really busy lives. We go to school, work, have families. I get it. It would be really cool if you could take time and visit a real cemetery or graveyard and look at some real graves. There's some very old cemeteries around here, so you can get some very good data. Um, that being said, um, I know that you might not be able to go. And so I have oops, this one. Um, I have provided cemetery data. If you're like, I can't get out, there's no way that I can get to a cemetery. I can't spend that amount of time in a cemetery. That's fine. This data is from a cemetery. Um, it's got the name of the person, B for born, D for died, um, and actually what is written on their grave. So if it, that's another reason why it's cool to go to the cemetery. You get to see a lot of things and wonder about what these people were like. Um, well, one of the things we're looking at is changes in demographics or, you know, the, the kind of data about populations in the United States um, over the last few years. So we're going to look at people who died before 1949 and compare them to those who died after 1950. Um, and so you can make predictions about what you will see. In fact, I'm going to bring that up here and let's look at this lab. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's the lab. It's It'll be the assignment. This right here, you click to download and it will come up as this right here, this cemetery data sheet. Um, you'll see in that little tab in Moodle, actually let's go right to it so everyone can see at the same time, this little tab where it says January 29th. You can click on these individual things or if you're just in the regular Moodle, um, I'll, I'll make mine look like yours for just a minute. If you scroll down, it looks very empty. If It's got information here about the week. But if you could just click right on the, the week name, it'll come up with all the stuff that's under that week. So you'll find the lab. It's a little loud around here today. Um, you'll find the lab. You'll also find um, where to turn it in. That's right here. You'll find this Google Sheets that I'll get to in, in a little bit. And in case you can't get to a cemetery, you'll find the cemetery data. So you may not need to use this. Um, if you ever need help navigating Moodle, send me a message. I will do my best to help you. You can get on Zoom, whatever you need. Okay, let's get really into how you're going to do this now. So I'd really like you to go to a cemetery. If you can't, you can just kind of use this cemetery data I've given you from the San Luis Cemetery. Um, so what I want you to do first is kind of guess what you think um, you'll see. Maybe you've already kind of got an idea or maybe you looked at some stuff, but make some guesses about what you think you'll see. Then you're going to get um, the birth and death years of of some different people. Um, if possible, it might not say, you might not be able to tell whether, they're, whether they are male or female. Um, and we're going to fill in some data about them. You're probably not gonna have an equal number because unless you purposefully go and try to find an equal number, you might have more males or more females or more people that died at one time or another, but do your best to keep that as even as possible. So, what you would want to do is here, as you're going through the cemetery or the cemetery data, what you want to do is write down the ages of the people. So you might not see, the first person you see might not have died at the youngest. Maybe you see someone who died when they were 29 or 39, I can't type. Um, then maybe the next person was a child. Maybe the next person lived to be old. 
maybe um, you'll see a couple people who died when they were kind of young. So what you're going to do is figure out how old these women were when they died. In this column, you're going to put uh, women who died before 1949. So like the year they died might be 1912, 1887, um, 1949 or 1948. Um, that's who's going to go there. In this column, you'll write the ages of women who died after the year 1950. And you can use anything um, up until recent. So maybe they died in 2006 and they were older. That was really old. <laughs> maybe they were older. Um, maybe there is someone who died younger um, or very young. So you're going to put the age that they died. So as you go through, you'll look at and be like, okay, well, this is a woman and she died in the year 1939. She was 41. And you'll either look at your data on the paper or you'll look in the cemetery. Um, so that's what's going to go in this part. You're going to write down the ages of the women. And in this side, that side, you're going to write down the ages of males when they died in the same way. So that's your data collection. That's when you're at the cemetery. That's when you're looking at the, the San Luis Cemetery data, which, whichever one you want to. How many people should you have? The more you have, the better it will be. But I realize there's only a limited number of people in the cemetery, and there's a limited number of people um, on the cemetery data I've given you. Um, it would be ideal to have about 20 in each column. I realize that might not be possible. Um, I, at minimum, minimum, please have um, 10 in each column. Why? Because the numbers won't won't come out very very well if you, you have fewer than that. Um, if you're having trouble finding something or anything, I will do my best to help you. So try to have at least 10 numbers in each column. If you could have 20, I would say you make that your maximum. That would be great. Um, but I get it. So somewhere between 10 and 20. What if I have like 15 females in one and then 12 in another. And then for males, I found like 20 for one and then like, you know, 13 for another. That's fine. You want to try to get them as close as possible, but that's fine. If you have it within that range, it'll be just fine. Okay, so this is how you calculate survivorship and mortality. I tried to have a little example using starting with 20 people and showing you how the math will work. Um, but I actually also made something that I'm hoping will be easier for you to use. So let me show you what that is because I, I programmed it to do the math for you. Um, it's here under this Google Sheets for Lab. Speaking of, if you got this uh, before today, I um, I actually edited the, the formula in the Google Sheets to make it work better. So if you have one that you downloaded like Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, um, get a new copy because I updated it and it's, it's better. So when you click on it, you'll see something like this. It might ask you to sign into your Google Drive, but you'll see something that looks like this. You want to click make a copy. That way you don't steal the original. Steal. That way you don't use the original and you can put all your data in it and no one else has access to this. So um, when you click make a copy, my, my computer is quite slow and I wanted to show you. You'll see something like this. This is where you're going to put in some data and then it will do math for you and it will be so nice. Let me try to show you. Let's say you, um, you went to the cemetery or looked at the cemetery data and you found that before uh, there were some women who died before 1949 and um, two of them died, died very young. I know that's super tragic. Um, you can see my little swirling uh, circle up here. It doesn't want me to type in just yet. So let's just say you found two that had died before um, 
you know, when they were very young. You just put the number two there. Where did you get that number from again, Lynn? I'm, I don't get it. It's from this data. So let's say you had um, collected a bunch of data, and I'll try to use these numbers here. Um, I think this will be enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So we're going to use this data as an example. Um, I'm going to look, and I see two of these women died when they were between the ages of 0 and 9, right here. Um, so I'm going to take that information, I'm going to put it here, two females died in that age range. Now how many died between the ages of 10 and 19? Um, well, let's take a look at what I wrote. Um, I see 12, 16, and 15, and 18. Oh, actually, oh my goodness, I made up a lot of very numbers. 19, 18, 12, 16, 15. So in my data, I have five girls who died in that age range. So what I'm going to do then is put the number five here. Um, and what I will do is go through and I will look at who died in this age range. Let's see, I have one in their 20s, so I'll put the number one here. How many people do I have in their 30s? I have one, so I'll put another number one there. How many people died in their 40s? Um, I have two, so I'll put the number two up there. How many people died in their 50s? I don't have any. If you look, I don't have any 50s or 60s, but I do. Sorry, but I do have one into their 70s, and that's the oldest person. So what I'll do is I have none in 50s, 60s, one in one in their 70s. Now my head is of course blocking this, but let's see if we can um, make this visible for you. Um. What I've done, and then I'll just add zeros to these because I didn't see anyone in those age ranges. Um, I've built this sheet to add up all the numbers in this column. So your number here where it says total will be different, but that's the total number of women that I saw in this thing. I had 12. Um, I also tried to do something really neat. Um, I had it auto-populate here. See this females remaining alive from this data? Um, that's the math that you would have needed to do here, uh, 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 right here. So this is um, deaths per age interval. That's what I put into that Google sheet that you just saw where I had here the number two. I had here the number five. That data came from right there, those columns right here. Um, so that's what I put into my Excel sheet. We're not meeting as a class, so you don't need to do anything with this class data. And the way I have this column, I can't delete it. So just pretend like it's not there. Now here, the number alive. Okay, That's what I had it fill out for you in this. This is the number alive. So our total was 12. So at the start, we had 12 women alive at this age range. And then because some died within that age range, we have fewer and fewer until at the end we only have one alive in that age range, and then there are none alive in that age range. So these numbers right here, you don't have to do any math with that. You can just copy and paste these numbers for your data, not, not the one I just did, here, right in this group data. And that'll be there. Then you're going to calculate survivorship. Um, that's what you're going to be doing um, you know what, let me show you really fast um, how to make a graph, and then I'm going to show you um, some survivorships. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put us all on pause, I'm going to fill in some numbers, show you how to make a graph, then I'll show you how to do survivorship. So you're going to see me, like my program here, see me pause, and then you'll see how to make a graph, and then how to do survivorship, and that's all you, the rest you need to know. Okay, we're back. So what I've done here while, while you were gone um, was add in some pretend data. So you can pretend I went to the cemetery, I collected these data, I put all my numbers in about 
who died and when. And the Excel file does all this math for me. It totals up how many I saw. So I saw 12 of each female, 15 of these males at this time, and 12 here. So it adds up and gives me a total, which you'll need. Um, and then it does some math, giving you how many people were surviving at each time interval. Um, here's how you make a graph. I have little instructions right over here, but I'm going to show you. You're going to click and holding your clicker down, your mouse down, you're going to highlight. So you click and drag. It's faint, but you can tell that there's a light blue box around all my things. And now see how there's a line? This has highlighted all my data. That's what you want to do. So here's the data that we're going to highlight. Um, these columns right here. Then what we're going to do is go insert. And of course they don't call it a graph. They call it an incorrect name. They call it a chart. It's not a chart. It's a graph. Now your graph might look a little strange. Like this isn't right. We're looking for a line graph. You're going to get something that will say chart editor. You can change this to a line graph. You'll end up seeing four lines. Um, so I'm going to click on this line graph, and there we go. Um, I'm going to just get rid of my chart editor and show you. Your graph looks something like this. It shows you, and each line with a different color shows how these um, males and females survive, depending when they were born or when they died. Um, so you can kind of see... Um, in my pre-1949 data, there's like a faster drop-off. Um, and then in my post data, there's a slower drop-off, and they seem to live a little longer. You might see something similar. You might see something different. I just made this data up just to show you. So there's, it's all made up. <laughs> um, yours might look similar. If you need help making the graph, let me know. I think I even have a video somewhere that I can show you on my channel that that shows how to make a graph using Google Sheets if you need help. Um, if you are struggling, if something's not right, you'll want to like use the chart editor and you can get to the chart editor by double clicking on basically any portion of your graph. You might want this setup area. Um, if your data is very, 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 very strange, even after you change it to a line chart, sometimes it will flip these um, you can always like see the switch rows columns. Sometimes that's checked and it shouldn't be. Um, so just ask if you're confused. I know this is like tedious, but you can go back to this part of the video where I showed you what to highlight and see if, if yours matches. So let's get to the last thing. And that is how to do survivorship. I have it written right up here. <clears throat> survivorship, you divide column B by the total. Um, it's going to give you a fraction or a decimal. So um, our total, if you look back, my head's in the way, if you look back um, for the data that I made up, our total number of deaths, or total number of women we looked at was 12. So our total is 12. So of course, if you take column B here and divide it by the total, it's always going to be 1 at the start. It just always is. After that, every number is going to be a decimal less than one. So like the survivorship means 100% of the people are there. And then we kind of look at what percent of people are left. So um, what we can do then is take, in this case, we'll take, I even have up the calculator, 10 divided by 12, and we get 0.83. So that means 83% of all the people are still alive. So we'll put 0.83. That's all you have to do. I know there's a little bit of work involved, but like that's that's what you have to do. And so it shows you like the percent of people surviving at each age. And you can compare those numbers. Um, you'll make that graph and then you'll answer these um, four questions. So there's only four other questions to answer. Um, if you have questions, send an email. If something doesn't seem clear, send an email. If you're working on something and, and you want to send me the link and say, does this look right? Send an email. Um, 
I promise I will try to get back to. If I don't see it in the evening time, um, for whatever reason, I hope you know by now that you will see a reply from me in the morning. Um, and I do try to check my email regularly. So if you are stuck, send an email. If you are a person who likes to start looking at labs and work right on the due date, I highly recommend you start earlier because some things will take a little bit of time. Um, but from so many of you, you've been so communicative and I know you're working hard and trying. Um, I hope that you will get some enjoyment and some learning out of this class. And I hope these don't feel too tedious or boring to, I hope they feel like something interesting and applicable. Um, and I hope that we'll talk soon. Okay, I feel like that's long enough. All right, bye.